This is the Four Man Rush. Uh, Mr. Roy Bravion. Now, this kid's uh, some of an athlete, folks. Uh, Will, uh, not Will, sorry. Kevin, how do you, uh, how's this man stand out to you? Well, one thing about selecting this man that stood out for me is that, you know, when we did our four man rush mock draft on the last podcast, uh, I was able to nail down both defense linemen, him and Derrick Brown. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I definitely feel good about it. Um, he got those, someone that he got those receipts. That, uh, what'd you say, Tim? He got those receipts. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You know, you know, I ain't sure I got them papers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but overall, though, man, um, I was ecstatic. I think this was the best pick on day three for the Panthers. Uh, we're talking about, you know, a player that's six foot one, 337 pounds, uh, even though he wasn't invited to the combine to show off his athletic ability. But if you are to take the word of his coach, who had him at Baylor for three years, uh, Matt Rule, um, he's very athletic. It shows up in his film a lot. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people will be like, well, he's only six foot one. Well, when you line up in the trenches, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can use that to your advantage and get that leverage and get up underneath those big offensive linemen that's six five, six six. that's hunkering down. You know, you're low to the ground and you can get up on them, you know, quicker because you already got the leverage advantage. So, you know, that's where you got to, you know, think beyond the, uh, initial numbers to see the impact. Uh, but overall, you know, we're talking about a guy that, <laughs> you know, ran a full nine at that size as well. I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of man moving, you know, moving quick. So again, even at 337 pounds, you know, Matt Rule is still able to get someone with some top notch mm-hmm. speed and athleticism, even on the defensive line. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I like about him is his ability to play, um, the nose position, he could play the zero technique in a 30 front. Uh, he can also play uh, some three technique as well. Uh, Marty Herner had mentioned when he went to uh, Senior Bowl that he really stood out to him. And he called Matt Rule and, and told him, like, yo, you know, your boy Roy, he really uh, out here putting in work. So uh, I think that's when he initially got on the Panthers uh, radar, at least in the eyes of um, Herney. Uh, because Matt Rule said that uh, he didn't need to talk to any of his players he coached because he already knows what he's getting with him. Uh, but overall, I just like the fact that him, along with Derrick Brown, um, along with uh, Zach Kerr, along with uh, Kawan Short, um, I just think that we, got, we we finally have a defensive tackle rotation that is not only uh, effective but versatile as well. You know, you can't really just peg – you know, any of our defense staff can say they can only play at one position, and I like that. So, you know, when uh, Brayvon Roy was doing his Zoom interview after getting drafted, he already said that uh, he's looking forward to working with Derrick Brown, and uh, he said it's going to be a lot of trouble for, for teams we play against. So I like his confidence. I like his um, his playmaking ability. I like his athleticism, and uh, I think he's definitely definitely going to be someone that's, that fans are, are going to know about um, for years to come. Hmm. Hmm. So he's going to be trouble, trouble. <laughs> J. Day, what's the deal? How you feel about Mr. Brevillon? Honestly, this is one of my favorite, uh, my favorite day three picks ever. Wow. Just, just because, just because of the athletic profile, not only that, but you're also getting somebody that could be a, a impact uh, in in rotation. If you if you're getting that on day three, no matter if it's the fourth round, fifth round, sixth round, seventh round, if you get that in UDFA, period, like somebody that could be an impact day one in the, in the rotation, especially at D tackle, where D tackle the third D tackle off the bench is every bit as important as the first two. Um, your D tackles are not going to play. Like you want to make sure that they have they they have somebody that can spell them, and you're not losing control of the the gaps. Um, he's perfect for that, um, and I think his pass rush is underrated. Um, a lot of things, a lot of times, people neglect pass rushing if you don't get home. 
But um, what he does well, extremely well, and what Brown does extremely well that went under the radar is they push the pocket from the interior. And um, on the defense like ours, now look, at we got young dogs on the outside. We got Lobo, we got Burns. So we push the interior and the edges are doing what their job and they're beating their guy one-on-one. It's a sack. So um, it's a it's a, it's a a home run pick, especially this late. Normally um, your sixth and seventh round picks are guys that are going to be projects. But I think um, with boys, uh, with his stature, and with his power and his caliber of an athlete, I think his traits are going to going to transfer over a little sooner than people expect. You're here. I feel you, man. Will, how you feel about Mr. Roy? Yeah, this is a great uh, round six pick. I think um, I expected to come out of this draft with either James Lynch or Bravion Roy from Baylor. So I guess Roy was uh, more fit the value of the pick. I should I say his Lynch would have been a reach a little bit earlier if we would have took him instead. But I watched, I was studying Phil Snow's defense and just Bravion Roy stood out. I think I was watching the Kansas game when he's relentless. He was constantly in the backfield getting quarterback pressures. I mean, he's stout against the run. I mean, Baylor, you got to remember Baylor and the Big 12 ran a lot of three man fronts and they only rushed three and dropped eight. And they were still getting pressure by only rushing three. Mm. So you got three defensive linemen against five blockers. And Bravion Roy was still getting pressure and still was one of the most effective interior defensive linemen in terms of pass rush win rate. So, I mean, he, he I mean, him and James Lynch on that interior line at Baylor were just doing a great job of being able to accept that challenge of rushing three and getting three man pressures. And they were just so effective in doing so. I think he's a good pick in day three because of the his um, role in the defensive line rotation. You got to remember defensive linemen are one of the position groups that you're not going to play 100% of the snaps. You know, your starting rotation maybe get 60 65%. So you need a quality second line rotation that can take that additional 35 40% of the snaps. So I think with Bravion, Roy, Zach Kerr, you know, and the two edge rushers, depending on how that camp battle plays out, You'll have two quality defensive line rotations. The question is why, you know, someone will ask, why did he fall to the sixth round? I just think his length, hand size, and physical traits weren't that attractive to teams. He um, was at the Shrine Bowl where he balled out. That's where Marty Herney first learned about him, you know, called up Matt Rule, and they were um, on the same page from there that this guy's a baller and he can uh, play as he was balling out during practice that week. But then I thought he was snubbed because he didn't get invited to the combine. And I think that was one of the bigger combine snubs considering how productive he was throughout the season. Mm. So he didn't get to work out at the combine. And then with this COVID situation, he never really able to have a pro day. So we never really got to see his athletic profile on paper. Mm. And then Matt Rule comes out and says he probably would have ran a 4 8 4 9 at the combine. So imagine what that would have did for his draft style. We might have not even be able to give him get him in the sixth round if he was able to test and show scouts and just, and football executives how athletic he is for that size. Mm-hmm. So overall, I think this could be, you know, one of the better day three picks we've had in a while. I think he'll be an immediate guy that can come in and crack that starting or to crack that second string D-line rotation and play a significant number of snaps right off the bat. Right on, man. Good pick, coach. Good pick. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah, this rotation is going to be nasty. They're going to be young, too, man. Good Lord of mercy. Woo! Oh, man. All right. Damn it, COVID. You got to go to hell on somewhere. <laughs> you got to go to hell on. Let's get this season going. All right. So, real life, just take it out and really let it breathe. So, baby, just chill. Yeah. She love it. We out in public and we can just chill with my partners and we can go back to my crib and just chill out the covers and do we come me and you love us. The Foreman Rush is brought to you by the love and respect of and for the Carolina Panthers and Carolina Panther fans everywhere. Keep pounding. The Four Men Rush is a non-affiliate of the Carolina Panther organization. All thoughts, assessments, and content of this podcast is directly related to the Four Men Rush exclusively. Thank you.